This is Dan Baer with California Survival School and SurvivalLife.com. Stick around, we're gonna teach you how to tackle survival priorities from a primitive perspective. We'll teach you how to tackle the basic shelter, water, fire, food, and all the rest of the stuff that goes into making sure that you can make it effectively through a survival situation, even if you have no gear with you. What I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna go over a standard debris hut style shelter. Uh, this is your textbook style shelter, uh, but we're gonna improve on it uh, past what you can normally find in books or maybe you've seen on TV. I'm Dan Bear with California Survival School. We're out here today in beautiful Southern California to talk about tackling survival situation priorities from primitive low tech methods. When it comes to survival priorities, your first priority in any situation is almost always going to be shelter. And when we talk about shelter, I should clarify that what I mean is the ability to regulate your body temperature effectively. I think that's the best way to think about shelter. And so when it comes to a situation where I may be out and I get stuck for whatever reason without any modern gear, what is it that I'm going to do to make sure that my temperature is regulated effectively, that my core temperature, my body does not have to fight to, to make it stay at 98.6. So if it's a hot day, uh, that's, things get a little easier. I need to find shade, I need to slow down, I need to get water. Um, those things help to you know, be near water, being able to get my clothes cool, being able to stay in the shade. Um, that's gonna help keep me cool. In the sun, my clothing is a huge deal as far as shelter goes. I need to be able to make sure that my clothing um, is covering me. I don't wanna be running around in just my shorts. I wanna make sure that if I'm out traveling uh, through the sun out somewhere, that I'm dressed effectively. Long pants, long shirts, um, clothing that's not going to be uh, thick necessarily, but clothing that's gonna cover. I wanna make sure I'm keeping the sun off myself. Hats, uh, bandanas, things that are gonna help keep the sun off, directly off me. Um, if your body's fighting to regulate its temperature, you're gonna be using your water resources, your calorie resources, and it's gonna really stress your body. And frankly, when they find uh, you know, lost hikers, 80% of, of emergency rescue situations um, tend to be lost hiker, single day scenarios where someone gets trapped out. Um, they're not meant to be out there for a long time. Re regulating your temperature, especially in a cold weather situation, is huge. So what we gotta look at is what it's in our environment that can regulate our temperature. If it is cold, our first thing is to, to insulate ourselves. Insulation, and when it comes down to it, is a bunch of material that I can pack together and trap air. These little tiny micro pockets of trapped airspace make a heat transfer super tough. So it, it'll keep the heat close to my body and the heat will, will leak out a lot slower than if it's just open to the air. So what, I, what do I have here in my environment that can be good for that? I have a ton of stuff. Right at my feet, I have a bunch of grass. The drier stuff is gonna be better. Moisture makes things cooler, no good. But if that's all I got, that's what I'm gonna work with. The way insulation works, I have a bunch of stuff right here that it just gets packed together. If I can keep that stuff packed together nice and tight, uh, that's gonna provide some good insulation. If I only have enough insulation in my area to just pack my clothes, I'm gonna pack myself till I look like the Michelin man. And that's what we're gonna, we're gonna make work um, for the situation. But oftentimes, if I have this type of stuff, I can go further than that. Um, when it comes to, if I'm spending the night out here, I'm gonna try to get myself cocooned in a big pile of insulation. Um, when it comes to natural stuff, it's gonna be a lot more than what you have in your sleeping bag. When, uh, with your nice stuff, your downfill from your sleeping bag, um, you know, they can get that stuff pretty small and still keep it warm. Um, but unless you have 300 dead geese that you come across in the forest, there's no way you're going to have enough insulated material um, to pack stuff tight like that and keep it, keep it to be what you need. So what we have to do um, is, is use what's out here and see what we can come to, together with to make some effective insulation. And generally that means we're gonna have a lot more material. Um, so what I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna go over a standard debris hut style shelter. Uh, this is your textbook style shelter, uh, but we're gonna improve on it uh, past what you can normally find in books or maybe you've seen on TV. So let's, let's take that for a go right now and I'm gonna go gather the materials. The first thing I need to do is get a huge bed of insulation going. Um, and that's one of the things that's often skipped in books or on TV shows. They, they completely forget to mention that if you don't insulate yourself from the ground, you're gonna be sleeping on an ice cube. And if any of you have been camping and you didn't have a nice, uh, nice ground pad underneath you, you know you wake up at three or four in the morning and you're freezing. So let's get that done first. That's even in a low debris situation, that's what you need to do first. So let's get it done. So when it comes to making a bed effective, I wanna make sure that when I get on that and it compresses, I still have six inches of ground clearance. One, this keeps me out of contact with the ground. I'm not gonna be 
uh, having the heat sucked out of me by the by the cold ground and the temperature differential. And two, if things get a little bit wet, my floor isn't waterproof. So if I have some ground clearance, that's going to keep me dry.